Welcome to Sports and Songs Podcast. We're on season three, episode number 38. This is a songs edition. Andy, yes. Andy, how are you doing today? Doing good, thanks. How about you? Good. Well, today's August 10th, 2022. This is the songs edition. Uh, we're going to do a little tribute, so to say. Yes. What, what big news hit this week in the music world, Andy? It, it was the passing of um, many in our genre can many men in our genre can say one of our first girlfriends olivia newton john passed away from uh complications to breast cancer we'll just leave it at that um she'd been fighting it for a while and just finally got the best of her um so she's that was tuesday wednesday that happened? tuesday late monday night yeah um monday because we mentioned this on monday and uh we thought well we were going to kind of do this album probably closer to when school started because it's kind of a school-themed movie for the Grease soundtrack, but we had a production meeting and moved it up to this week. Now look what I found! Look what I found in the wife's arc in the wife's archives. Oh, I thought maybe it was her pink lady jacket. No, there it is. Oh, there it is. We've got the LP, ladies and gentlemen. We got the LP, the actual nice. soundtrack. Now. It's not mine. I just just want to let everyone know that uh, it is hers. Um, I think it's a good tribute to do this for Olivia Newton-John. Um, I'm not that big of a fan of soundtracks myself. Grease was a big one, a big selling one. But <clears throat> this will be good to do this one. This was a huge selling album. And what we'll do here tonight is do the album review on the Grease soundtrack, Andy. There it is, yep. Very good soundtrack. I've seen the seen the movie numerous times. Um, kind of a uh, musical guy for for uh, movies and plays. Seen the play a few times. Um, yeah. So this is, and and this is basically Andy, like you said, it's it's a high school musical about high school. Yeah. So, uh, the original uh, high school musical. Yeah. The original. But it works. It sells, and um, gener a couple generations later. They put out that same thing called High School Musical, and it's the same type of deal. Everyone wants to see it. They, it's a great, uh, it's a great concept. <clears throat> with it, I think Fox Network was it ten years ago or something did a live TV version of this movie. So you know, still still plays today. One of the movies that were the original is great, and unfortunately the the follow up bombed. I mean. <laughs> To find the word bombed was the follow-up to this movie. So. Exactly. Well, the Which original, I've never seen. The original motion picture soundtrack for the 1978 movie Grease, it sold, now get this, Andy, uh, it sold approximately 28 million copies worldwide. We've done a lot of album reviews and a lot of, a lot of hit albums and hit, hit songs and some great masterpieces here on this show. We've done over 120 album reviews, but boy, 28 million copies is huge. It's making it, it makes it one of the best sell, selling albums of all time. Also ranking amongst the best selling soundtrack albums of all time. Besides performers, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, the album also featured songs by rock and roll revival group, Sha Na Na, as well as the hit song, Grease. Yes, I was a big fan of them as a little boy. Oh, yes. A tune written by Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees was Grease and sung by Frankie Valley from the Four Seasons. And um, so this, this it had the right, the, the perfect recipe here uh, for what you want to sell music. All right. Now, this is where it yeah. gets interesting. Now, Andy, tell me if you don't know some of this stuff. It may be news to you. You may be familiar with it. Uh, okay. It may, be, it may be news, but this soundtrack was released in April 1978, two months before the film's release. Um, yes, very odd. And they released it ahead of time. Now, the, the, song, the, the, the songs that were released as singles were Grease in May of 1978. You're the one that I want 11 days later in 1978. Hopelessly devoted to you in August of 1978. And see, those were the big three of this yep. album. But they released six songs. The fourth song they released also in August, a couple of weeks later, was Summer Nights. 
And then Sandy was released at the end of September and followed by Greased Lightning. Uh, so six singles were released from this album. I think Summer Nights and um, you're the one that I want to probably the most big uh, popular ones. I get uh, high school dances and dances a lot because it's still a lot of crowd reaction singing back and forth. Oh, yes, it is. It is. Now, this was in this. This was 1978, Andy. So guess what album had knocked off the charts when this thing came up? Summer of 1978, the Rolling Stones Some Girls album was number one. It knocked off. Oh, wow. Now, this this also remained on the top of the charts for 13 straight weeks. But, yeah, Rolling Stones album Some Girls was at the top that got knocked out when this thing came out. Big, big in the UK also, Andy. Uh, these these, uh, these songs and this album, very, 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 very big. Now, two of the bass players on this soundtrack were at different times members of the band Toto. Oh, yes. <laughs> I knew one of them. I thought I'd get you on that one. but uh, I knew yeah. one of them was. I didn't know two. Two. Uh, and so uh, and the album sold, sold over 6 million copies in the U.S., uh, in the U.S. So here's the track listing. So this is a double double album, four sides essentially to the two LPs. Here's the track listing. Song side one, song one, Grease. That's that Barry Gibbs song, Bee Gees. Song Intro, two, song, yeah. Summer Nights. Song three, Hopelessly Devoted to You. That and that's the, really the one that took off for Olivia Newton John. Yeah. Uh, you're the one that I want. Was song four, and then Sandy. Song five. The nice thing with this album. Andy, these songs are two, three, four minutes long. That's it. Yep. Quick. Moves along very quickly. Side two. Song, uh, first song there on that side is Beauty School Dropout. Next song is Look at Me. I'm Sand Sandra D. Then Greased Lightning. And then it's raining on prom night. Alone at the drive-in. They had that uh, as a song and, and switched it. I was reading it's an instrumental only. But that actually was a, a song before they uh, trimmed it back and just made it an instrumental for the for the album. Final song there is Blue Moon by Sha Na Na. Side mm -hmm. three, technically, is Rock and Roll is Here to Stay. Then followed by Those Magic Changes. Followed by Hound Dog, of course. And then Born to Hand Jive. Tears on My Pillow follow next. And then Mooning. Mooning. Then it wraps up on the on the back of side two is Freddie, my love, rock and roll party queen. There are worse things I could do. Yep. A couple reprises. Look at me, I'm Sandra D. Is it a, is a reprise? They play that again on side four, same song. And then we go together. Then love is a many splendored thing, an instrumental, the second instrumental. Then it wraps up with the song Grease, another reprise. The exact same song on side A, one, wraps it up. So four sides, actually, 61 minutes long. And it is 61 minutes, 14 seconds long. Now, the genre, Andy, get this. The genre is rock and roll, pop, and doo-wop. Doo-wop, yeah, because of the shine and out part. Oh, but yeah. that third album, looks like it's basically all Sean and Ah songs. It is. Uh, side three is basically all the Sean and Ah stuff. So now this yeah, may okay. be the first doo wop album we've reviewed, actually. Yes. And unless we do a Sean and Ah one, probably the last doo wop. <laughs> now, the vocalists, a lot of performers on this album, a lot of people uh, involved. Uh, you know, leading off, it's Olivia Newton John vocals, John Travolta vocals, Stocker Channing. Has a couple couple songs on there. Frankie Valley, Valley Barry Gibb, Frankie Avalon. Yep. Um, you know, so this really took off just because of the names, the name recognition. And, and, and Barry Gibb at the time too, the year before that did Saturday Night Fever, also with John Travolta. Uh, and the Gibbs and Andy Gibb were just hot at the time. I think Barry Gibb could have sang a a menu and it would have gone number one. He was just on fire at that late seventies time. So yeah. Anything he touched was turning to gold back in those days. And it was, 
it was huge. And, and, you know, here's the back, you know, welcome to Rydell High, you know, of, co of course. Yes, Rydell High. But, but boy, we're talking 28 million albums. Yeah, and I think the probably, I, I don't know if they won, I can't recall offhand, uh, nominated for some awards on there. I know. Well, uh, you know what? It yeah, was, I did miss, I did miss that. Uh, they were. The album, the album was nominated for Album of the Year at the 21st Annual Grammy Awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Barry Gibby did Saturday Night Fever. They did the Grease album. They did you know, Staying Alive a couple years after that, the follow-up to Saturday Night Fever. You know, the song Staying Alive with the Gibbs. I mean, everything that man was touched was gold. John Travolta had already done an album before this. Olivia Newton-John speaks for herself. Dr. Channing... Uh, had done singing before, so it's not that they said, "Hey, here's a microphone, sing, you're a star." You know, they had done it before. Um, a few notes I got about Grease Lightning, the song Grease Lightning. I um, remember as a, a young eight-year-old boy watching it the first time, giggling during the song because some of the language that get, gets used. Yes. Um, the original part in that they changed it for the movie that John Travolta sing it. Um, the character Kaniki was supposed to do the singing, and they're going to have some words changed. But um, that wasn't going to happen with that cast, so they get a John Travolta. But the guy who wrote the song originally did not want to change the lyrics. That's why if you look at how that song charted, it didn't do very well. It didn't make the top 40 because radio stations would play it because of the lyrics. Okay. Um, then when it came to Fox wanting to do it and everybody else, he agreed to do some changes. So if you ever see the movie... That's kind of the running thing here at our house. Is when it's on, we wait for that scene. Okay, what time of day is it? What version of the song are they going to play? You know. And uh, but you look at the, what, what stereotype? Nineteen seventy-eight or or today? You get four guys in the shop talking about a car. What kind of language are they using? Yes. That. Yes. You know. So. Well, let's just, that's what it was. So. Because that's what guys wanted their muscle cars or their cars at the time to be. That that was the reason for them. And so, oh, so that's the guy didn't want to change the lyrics. Oh, in the movie, uh, in the film, the spot in the film where they play the song, You're the One That I Want, was earmarked yeah. originally for a song called All Choked Up. And they, they flip, flip flopped that out and brought in You're the One That I Want instead. I didn't know that uh, either. That I did not know, no. But yeah, very good movie. Uh, the soundtrack, again, was one of the first soundtracks that I remember um, wanting and having at home between uh, the family. The, like I said, the, the follow-up wasn't that good. Not good at all. But you, you hear these songs like it dances, um, reprived all the time. Who doesn't turn it up when you hear it on the radio now still, you know? And the movie gets a lot of rips because they go, Really? You got all these people in there and they're mid to upper twenties who are supposed to believe they're high school students. Yeah. People today rip at that. It's like, do you watch the shows today what you're trying to pull off with people in movies? You know? Yes. So it, it was going on back then and they're they lambast them. It's like, wait, they do that today. But um true fact about the movie, John Travolta almost didn't get that part. Really? Henry Winkler was supposed to have that part. Okay, that's right. I do remember hearing about that. Because the Fonz was big at the time, and that was the same type of character. Um, American Graffiti was out and all that other stuff, the same sort of thing. But since Travolta had a little more singing experience, it went that way. Interesting. Yeah, and once again, real big in the UK. These It was on the charts for many, many weeks, this, this soundtrack yeah. in the UK. Huge. Not that big in the Orient, if you look at it. Okay. The Orient did not find it as entertaining as we did. Not as appealing. No, no. Greasers and Pink Ladies and the Thunderbirds were not popular over there. Exactly. Um, All right. I, I, will, I will not do the picture. I would refuse to because I don't. But years ago, the missus and I did go as Danny and Sandy. When you're you probably. did. Now, this I didn't know. We'll have to see this, uh, post this on a no. throwback Thursday sometime. 
Uh, a GoFundMe page will be started once that dollar value is reached. The picture can be released. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'm sure over the years, yeah. many people have done that. Uh, right. That's probably more popular that as, as those couples. Even today, still, you still see it every now and then. Mm -hmm. That's big time. That's what you and the missus can do this year. Exactly. It, it could could be. Yeah. Now, now Andy, any, anything else on the Grease soundtrack that you can think of as far as uh, for the listeners? Anything else? Yeah. Any other notes? Well, one of the few songs that I kind of like that is, I, I guess because I, I like Frank, but Beauty School Dropout, I thought was kind of a really good song. Okay. Because it just really, that was him. And that's why I like so, so many different singers in there. Boom, boom, boom. You had Sean Anadu in there a bit. You had John Travolta. You had Soccer Channing. Uh, everybody, Olivia, of course, doing their things. But he got his couple songs in there. You know, Barry Gibb did his version at the end. So that's what made it kind of a fun album. Like I said, when they had the Shana Na songs all grouped together there too, it didn't feel like one album. It felt like you were listening to three or four different albums. So that's, I think, the appeal to me on it when I listen to it. Now, is there a any tribute cover bands that, that do this whole, you know, play it top to bottom? Well, I know Sean and Not the start back in the late 70s, early 80s, did a lot of them. Uh, of course, they're not around anymore. But uh, every now and then, I suppose you find like a, a 60s cover band. Even though the movie came out in 78, it was kind of a 60s genre. You'd probably see something like that. Oh, sure. Uh, but I don't know of any offhand. Um, I just uh, know like Sean and I did it a lot. And every now and then, you'll see some bands. They'll pull them up. Um, Stray Cats might. The only type of band I think would be that same wheelhouse, Brian sure. Setzer, if you ever did anything like that. Oh, sure. Um, I, I did not look up to see if anyone's ever recovered these songs. I'm sure they have, but no one ever released them. I'm sure other bands have covered these songs, but no one's really released it as a single. Gotcha. That makes sense. I don't know if it's because their version was so horrible or just out of respect they didn't release it. You know, I don't know why, but. Well, speaking of out of respect, uh, you know, the, the late Olivia Newton-John, we're, we're doing this review here uh, for her uh, as she passes away here yeah. this week. Any other final notes? You know, just all of her music in general, really, at the time. Um, the physical album um, was kind of a big one for, again, our, our genre. That was, it was the beginning of the top 40 rock. It wasn't really rock and roll. It wasn't pop. It was that top 40 is what she sure. was. And, um, but it kind of, you know, you, you look at the, the song in the video then, it's like, oh my God, look what they're getting away with then. And she just wasn't afraid to push that envelope. Um, did she need to get her voice and talent out there? Who knows? But um, she was very talented. I've seen lots of artists on social media from all genres paying respects to her that they they didn't work with her and stuff. And, and it's just sad. I mean, and it, the thing is, is without getting a, a, a soapbox or a platform or anything here, it was breast cancer that took her. Um, women and men can get breast cancer, cancer of all genera, all types. Get checked out. I don't care who you are or what it is that runs in your family. Get checked out. That's all I gotta say on that. And that's all I gotta say about that, as Forrest Gump would say. Makes makes sense. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll look forward to we've got some new album review for next week. We'll keep that a secret for now. But have a good week, everybody. All right. Talk to you later. See you. All right. See you.